morning. We're here with Representative Tina Orwell from the 33rd District. How are you today? Good. Good morning. So this is the 11th week. You have about a little over a month to go for this session. How are you feeling? You know, I'm getting the steam for the second half. A lot, lot left to do. Okay. So last week, the uh, revenue forecast came out, and there were so many numbers floating around. People were talking two billion, half a billion. What happened in the end? Well, we were all very concerned about how much the revenue would be down. I mean, we know we're just early signs of recovery. We have a ways to go. And we were really worried it would be over a billion. We ended up about 600 million, which is still a lot of cuts, but not, not as severe as it could have been. But the state has been making cuts throughout this recession. What kind of cuts have you made? We've made really significant cuts, and we've been doing this. This will be the third budget cycle where we've had to do cuts. We've cut a lot of state employees. You know, we've cut, I think, a total of 8,000 state positions in the last several years. So we have 3,000 state employees, 3,100 higher ed, and 2,100 positions lost in our school district. So well, that's a lot of people. That is a huge number of people. Yes. What about benefits for state employees? Those have also changed. Well, we did a salary freeze, and so there's no increases. And we also mandated, I believe it was 10 uh, furlough days, which are unpaid days that people have to take off. And so that equates basically to a salary reduction, 3 to 4%. Okay. okay. What other kind of cuts have you made, like in the education sector? You know, we've cut $680 million from universities and colleges, which has been very significant. We've cut about $250 million from the basic health plan. And that's people who really kind of are the working poor that have relied on the state for health, for health care. We've cut uh, $150 million from our correctional system, which included closing five facilities. We've also cut $100 million from welfare to work, which is a way to help low-income families that are on benefits get back to employment. Okay, so let's go back to the revenue forecast. This number, this um, 700 or 680,000, what would the state need to do to reduce this number? Well, I think it's especially hard because we've made so many deep cuts. We were saying the other day that you could close all the universities in the state and still have 50% more to cut. So, I mean, it really is this pretty high magnitude. We could close down all of our prisons, and we still wouldn't meet this dollar amount. And we'd have all the criminals out in the street. Yeah, so we, we certainly aren't going to do that. that. That isn't an option. But when you start looking at the levels of resources we're reducing, it's very significant. And, and it will impact the state, unfortunately. OK. Now, I have another question for you. Um, you've been getting a lot of media attention on a bill that you sponsored 1997, which would extend some of the tourism taxes in King County for job development. What is this bill about, and why, are, why is it so debated at this moment? Well, this is a request from King County. This bill would allow them to extend these taxes. Uh, you know, if it made it through the legislature, then it would be a process in the county, and they could actually take it for a vote of the people as well. But what it was looking at is we have this opportunity to temporarily expand two of these taxes to actually do some job development, which would include the expansion of the convention center, it would be doing some low-income housing or workforce housing, as well as the arts. And all of these things are being tied back to tourism. Tourism is a very important part of our economy. And it's also investments that can get people in the building trades back to work quickly. So this is about extending tax. The word taxes is a bad word. Nobody likes taxes. I know. But what does this mean? How would it affect me if I live in King County? The majority are paid by visitors people coming into our county. A good example is the hotel motel tax, and that's one of the ones we're continuing. Um, another one is a rental car tax. Now, that may have some local uses, and we're looking at that as well. But again, people coming in tend to rent cars. The other one is the restaurant tax. And I, I estimate it's about a dime for every $20 you spend at a restaurant. A dime. A dime for $20. So it's a small amount that can do so much for our community that during this critical time can ex expand jobs. If they expand the convention center, it's looking that it would bring a quarter of a billion dollars in a year and about 130,000 people into our area. 
that's going to help those hotels and those restaurants. And that's why they're agreeing to expand this tax, because they know in the long run it's going to make our economy stronger. So the business community is behind this bill? Yes, the Seattle Chamber is behind this bill. King County is behind this bill, because they know that it's a good investment now to help us get out of this recession and be strong when we get out of it. Okay. Well, it sounds like a good idea, so let's hope it can go forward. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.